All right, today I want to speak about break camp from complaining. <laughs> the church has started. Hey, good to see you, Sam. Break camp from what? Come on, tell your neighbor, break camp from complaining. Come on, tell them, break camp. And if you're seated next to your spouse, it's a good sermon. Tell them, <laughs> tell them break camp from complaining. <laughs> <laughs> and then she will look at you and say, I don't complain, I just argue. No, 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 no. Break camp from complaining. So in our Bibles, we started a new series and we're spending a few months just zeroing in on the nation of Israel as they had left Egypt going to the promised land. And they spent over 40 years in the wilderness. A journey that would have taken them less than 20 days. They spent how many years? 40 years. And so last week we said break camp from fear. The fear of failure and the fear of giants. Someone called me from Entebbe and told me, I've been watching this. It has just set me free. And I, he, he to, she told me that I have had giants that I'm afraid of. So today we are going to be looking at break camp from complaining. Tell your neighbor, complaining. complaining. I've heard many of us say, complaining is part of life. That's not true. That's the worldly way of viewing life. The scripture says, Numbers 11. Numbers 11. If your neighbor has no Bible, tell him next week, don't come to church. <laughs> By the way, I'm serious. Numbers 11. In your Bibles. In your Bibles, Numbers 11. I know it's always on the screen, but it's beautiful when you open your Bibles. And that encounter, I highly encourage you, buy a Bible that you flip. The reason why, as you open your Bibles on your phone, what is going to happen? Someone is going to send you a WhatsApp. In your Bibles, Numbers 11. Are you there? The scripture says, I commence reading. Now when the people... Now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. For the Lord heard it, and his anger was arose. So the fire of the Lord burned among them, and consumed them in the outskirts of the camp. When the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. So he called that place Tabara. Because the fire of the Lord had burned against them. Now the mixed multitudes, those are the Israelites, who were among them, they yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? It has always been about food. Remember, we remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt. Actually, that fish was from Uganda, from the Nile. I remember the fish that we ate freely in Egypt. The cucumbers. Uh-huh. What else? What else? What else? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, stop complaining. <laughs> what are they remembering? Cucumbers. Onions. Garlic. Melon. <laughs> But now, verse 6, but now our whole being is dried up. Can you believe that? Our whole life is what? Dried up. That's what they say. There's nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Now the manna was like the coriander seed and its color was the color of delium. The people went out and gathered it and ground it on the millstones and beat it in the mortar and cooked it into pans. And made cakes of it. And its taste was like the taste of pasty prepared with oil. And when the dew fell on the camp in the night, the manna fell on it. And Moses heard the people. What were the people doing? Weeping. The complaining had turned into what? Weeping. Have you seen people who complain while they are what? Weeping. And the, Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families. So the weeping actually happened as a family. They would go in their tent and the entire family was what? Weeping and crying. 
everyone at the door of his tent. And the young of the Lord was greatly arose. Moses also was what? Displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you afflicted your servant? Why have you, why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive? <laughs> Did I conceive all these people? Did I beget them? That you should say to me, carry them on your bosom as a guardian carries a nursing child to the land which you saw to your fathers. Where, where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they weep all over me saying, give us what? Now go to Exodus, uh, to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Are you there? Open Deuteronomy chapter 1. Let's go to verse 26 and 27. The scripture says, Nevertheless, you have not got up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. Verse 27, which I'll spend some time on. And you complained. What did they do? I can't hear you. What did they do? They complained in your tents and said, this is how they say, this is how they complained. Because the Lord, what? Uh-huh. He has brought us out of the land of, to deliver us into the hands of the armor and to destroy us. So today I want to spend some time and talk about this subject that all of us are a victim. And that's the subject of you have to break camp from complaining. I've realized in our Christian walk, we have become so carnal. By carnal I mean we have become so worldly that we have exchanged the truth of the word of God for worldly methods. Many of us complain about everything and anything. There's no difference between us and the nation of Israel. No wonder we are far away from the promises of God. These people are the ones who cried out to the Lord and told the Lord, we are tired of Pharaoh. And the scripture says, and the Lord had their... Now he starts to deliver them from Pharaoh and they reach in the middle, they say, no, 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 no. We want onions. <laughs> you know this complaint? <laughs> we want cucumbers. What else? We want garlic. Can you, can you just imagine? They have forgotten that they were slaves. They have forgotten they were not eating meals. They have forgotten that Pharaoh was torturing them. They have forgotten that their children were being killed. They were killing them. But they are here in the middle of the desert. And they are stuck complaining about anything and everything. Now you may be quick to judge the Israelites. But I can tell you. For the years I have pastored. It amazes me how we complain. You prayed for the job. And the job finally came. Now you come back to my office. Oh, pastor, the boss is bad. You forget that you didn't have a penny. Now you have it. You were single for many years. And the Lord gave you a breakthrough. Now you have a husband. No, now he's not tall enough. He's not providing enough. You forget there's someone who wishes someone can hold them in their hands. That's how we are behaving. Oh, pastor, the parking lot is not enough. You forget there is a time you had no car. <laughs> Always complaining. Oh, pastor David did not say hello to me. What happened to you saying hello to him? Oh, pastor did not visit me. When did you ever visit me? You see, complaining 
is a counterfeit of praising the Lord. Let me say that again. Complaining is the counterfeit of praising the Lord. And instead of being grateful, we choose to what? Complain. So I want to spend some time and just expose those texts and we look at what complaining does. Because many of us may be ignorant. We don't know what complaining does. Number one, what does complaining do? Number one, it keeps away the promises of God. Complaining will keep away the promises of God on your life. Deuteronomy 1 verse 7 says, verse 27 says this, And you complained in your tents, and you said, Because the Lord hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us in the hands of the Amorites, to destroy us. They complained. Do you realize that all the time they were complaining, they were in their tents hiding? Instead of going after the promises of God, the things God has laid before you, you start complaining. What complaining does, it releases a negative spirit. You become, you, you carry a spirit of unbelief. You choose not to believe the promises of God. Why? Because the promises of God are found in the abundance of who he is. But when you complain, you speak the language of the enemy. And so you cease seeing the way the Lord sees. How can God entrust you with the more you want? How can God entrust you with the promises when you're busy complaining about what he did for you yesterday? Many of us are stuck in yesterday complaining, forgetting what God has done. No wonder God told Abraham, that's why Abraham was a man of faith. Wherever he went, Abraham pitched a tent, he put an altar for the Lord, and the Lord told him, do it as a remembrance. But every time you complain, my job, my wife, my, my dating, my this, my this, it is a sign of unbelief. The house is quiet. It's a sign of what? Unbelief. You have no faith in the God who has brought you this far. And I can prove it to you. The scripture says, and the children of Israel said, the Lord has brought us to kill us. Can you imagine for someone to say, the Lord has brought us this far to what? To kill us. Is that true? That's unbelief. The promises of God can never come to a tongue that complains. Let me say that again. The promises of God can never come to a tongue that is always complaining. By the way, complaining is a posture of your heart. Grumbling and complaining is a posture of your heart. And those two, wherever you have complaining and you're grumbling, you will never find faith. Faith does not inhabit in a heart that complains. Because faith is believing the promises of God. How will you believe the promises of God when your heart is inclined to grumbling and complaining? So the promises of God will never come near you. Why? Because you've missed out on the promised land. The entire generation, the entire generation that complained died in the wilderness. And the scripture says the reason they died in the wilderness was because of unbelief. The root of unbelief is complaining. Hallelujah. The reason why you are not seeing the miracle you're praying about is because you do more of complaining than praying. Did you know? This is, this is a fact. Did you know you live better than ki the king's that ruled Uganda 200 years ago, 150 years ago. You live better than King Kabalega lived. Did you know that? Some of you can't believe it. You drive a car, he didn't. You drink cold water, he didn't. He had to go and hunt and get meat. Do you go and hunt? So why are you complaining? The 
house is quiet today. I knew it was going to be quiet. The second thing complaining does. Number one, it takes you away from the promises of God because the language of complaining is a birthplace of unbelief. Number two, complaining takes away your peace and the peace of others. Let's go to the scripture. Numbers. Let's go back. Numbers. Let's go to verse. Let's go to Moses. <laughs> Look at how. Verse 10. Then Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families. Everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was greatly arose. Moses also was greatly what? Displeased or angered. Have you been around people who complain? How many of you enjoy staying around someone who complains? In fact, the scripture says it is better to live where? On the roof. <laughs> you know, whenever I read scripture, this is this people where <laughs> scripture is so, it is better to live on the roof. Do you know how to live on the roof? Than to live with a woman that is complaining. When your wife is complaining, you can't wait to live on the top of the roof. Why? Because the kingdom of God, it should be Romans, it says, For the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but about three things. One, righteousness. The next one is what? Peace. And then joy in who? In the Holy Spirit. What complaining does, it takes away peace. When a man says, I hate being home, what he's saying is, I have no All the married women, I want to beseech you by the mercies of God. Stop what? And all the men say, Amen. Have you heard the voice? <laughs> the men, you have to take me out. I've just set you free. <laughs> Stop. Uh -huh. Have you seen the men are now, my friends? Let me speak to my, to my sisters. Complaining never solves any problem, complaining removes the peace of God from your family. And nothing, in fact, the moment you start complaining, do you know what the man does? He has said it, Bishop. What do we do? We switch off. You can talk till the cows come home. I have what? Switched off. In fact, I catch the remote and then you say, you are not even listening to me. Of course I can't. Why? The language is a language of complaining. Please hear me. Whenever there is a spirit of complaining, the spirit of peace will live. Because the scripture says, in the kingdom of God, there is righteousness, peace, and joy, or in the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit is a function of the kingdom of God. And where Holy Spirit is, you'll find those three things. You'll find righteousness, which is, comes through the power of the Holy Spirit saving you. The next thing you'll find is the peace. The peace of God that surpasses man's understanding is found in the power of the Holy Spirit that protects your mind. You'll find joy, which is the heart. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy is good to medicine. It brings healing. So whenever you have the spirit of quarreling and complaining and always complaining, the peace of the Lord lives, it means that the power of the Holy Spirit cannot function where there is complaining. It cannot. So what happens is Moses is distressed. Why? Because there is complaining. Some of you, your world has become so small and you're saying, God, give me destiny helpers. God, I don't have friends. The reason why you have no friends is because you have a tongue that complains about everything. No one wants to be around someone complaining. And the church says, Amen. I can tell you, I don't want to be around someone who complains. Moses didn't want. In fact, Moses wanted them, said, am I, am, am I their father? Am I the one who produced them? You can see Moses very annoyed 
Who are these people? And these are adults. How can adults be sandwiched in the spirit of complaining? The peace of God will always go where there is complaining. It will always leave. It leaves you. Some of us want the peace of God. You know why mental health has increased? If you want to see the level of complaint, go to social media. We all have an opinion about something and someone. And those opinions are not good. So our young people have no peace. And they wonder, Pastor, why don't we have peace? You know why you don't have peace? Because what you're feeding on is always quarreling, critiquing. It's a negative spirit. Tell your neighbor, break free from it today. Come on, tell them, stop quarreling. Tell them, stop quarreling. Tell them, stop complaining. Oh, the government here, the government there. Now, this one has happened. Now, the roads. Now, nuts. Now, things you can't control. The third thing we see in the text. Complaining brings diseases. In the text, so I was thinking about it and I said, Lord, it's so amazing. The Lord, actually after they complained, the next thing that happened, disease broke up. And people died. They had to repent. But the Lord reminded me, as a mirror, the way it happened that disease broke up. I was reading the science of complaining, how the brain operates. Every time, this is science, and those of you who are scientists know this. Every time your brain is complaining, it releases a hormone that causes distress in your body. That hormone brings you, causes tension in your body. That tension was supposed to be created when there is when there is danger, let me give an example. If you're walking and, and, and you meet a snake, what happens? Automatically, God created you that you will, you'll, you'll get afraid. And, and this is not whether you're young or old. When you have a little, the teenagers that are here, and you've told them, do not take that sugar. Let me use, let me use uh, that soda. And then they try to take it without your permission and you enter the house, what happens? They run away or they try to keep it away. Now, that hormone that causes you to react like that is good hormone. It's supposed to protect you. Whenever you are complaining, you are releasing that hormone continuously in your brain. So what complaining does, it releases that hormone continuously and it's not supposed to flow continuously. Then it subjects your body to a lot of stress. Are you hearing people saying, I am? Say it again, I am? Part of that stress is because you are what? Uh -uh, I can't hear you. Because you are what? Whenever you're complaining, you release that hormone. And so what happens is diabetes goes up. High blood pressure you become easily irritated. You've heard people say, no, no, no. The boss, you can't talk to him in the morning. He, he has to first settle. Why? Because that boss is always what? Complaining. Oh, you can't talk to daddy in the morning. He's not in the mood. Why? He's in the mood of complaining. Why can't you talk to daddy in the morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Mommy, mommy has not yet woken up. You, why? The people are telling you, we want to save you from the spirit of complaining. The challenge with it, many of us are falling sick. The children of Israel, God punished them. For us, sickness is in our body. Why? Because we carry a complaining spirit. Now, you turn to your neighbor. We're going to spend two minutes. It's going to be practical. One minute. What do you complain most about? Now, why are you smiling at me? You turn, you turn, you ask them. This is a practical message. Yes. What do you complain? If you're seated next to your husband or your wife, you tell them what they complain most about. 
Tash, don't look at me. Neighbor, neighbor, you look, you look, you look. Aha. 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 If you're seated with a friend, you tell them. Joan, you tell, you tell her what she complains about. You tell. <laughs> now, you <laughs> Godwin, stop looking at me. Turn to someone. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them what you complain about. Uh-huh. Now, the other thing I want you to ask them, why do you complain about it? Now, some of you are opening the Bible. No, you say, why do you complain? Flavia, why do you complain? Uh-huh. <laughs> the church is alive. Have they told you why they complain? You shout out why they complain. Shout loud. Uh-huh. I can't hear. Shout loud. Okay. At the count of three, I want you to shout loud why they said they complain. One, two, three. Money. <laughs> we complain about money. And why do we complain about money? And <laughs> why? Because of money. Now, whenever we are complaining about money, what we are doing is we are subjecting our body to unnecessary sickness. I want to tell you that. And the challenge with putting your body on unnecessary pressure, you are falling sick. Yesterday I was going somewhere with one of our elders that side of Masaka and he told me that the diseases we are suffering from now those diseases they are not medical diseases they are not they are emotional what? diseases we have constant migraines Constant migraines. Some of you are carrying a sack of medicine in your bag. Why? You are complaining. The paradigm in which you view life is a negative paradigm. The way you see life is like the children of Israel. For us, we want onions. For us, we want cucumbers. For us, we want garlic. The things I have never asked God, I have never prayed like that. But those are the things that are causing us to be sick. Number four. The fourth one, the Lord just blessed my heart with it. So number one, it keeps you away from the promises of God. Number two, it takes away your peace. Number three, it brings sickness. Number four, it displeases God. Tell your neighbor, it displeases God. Complaining displeases God. The scripture says, verse one, and now the people complained, and what happened? In fact, let's read it together on the screen. One, two, three, go. Shout it loud. It what? Uh huh. One more time. Uh huh. Now, when? What did it do? This 
scripture is so rich. It says, when the people complained, the next thing that happened, the Lord was displeased. The Lord was displeased. Now, I've heard people say, oh, I love you, Lord. I want to spend time with you. Um, you are my everything, Lord. In the same breath, but God now, this one, this one, this one, this one. What happens? The Lord is displeased. Why? Because the Lord heard the things they were saying. Whenever we complain, the Lord hears our complaint. And every time he hears our complaint, he is this displeased. Why is the Lord? When I asked him this morning, I said, Holy Spirit, why are you displeased when we complain? And the Lord told me that the reason why he's displeased when we complain, because we are speaking a language that is not coherent with the nature of our God. The nature of our God is a God who is always giving thanks. It's a God who is always worshipping. In heaven, the only language there is praise and worship. So when he sees you who is created in the image of God, instead of praising and worshipping, what do you do? You complain. It displeases him. Because that's not your nature. You were not created to complain. You were created to give thanks. In all things, yes, give him praise. In all things. That's what First Thessalonians says, chapter 5. In all things we give. Every time you're complaining, the Lord is displeased. And the Lord did not even mention it once. Verse 10 says this. Verse 10. Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. Then Moses had the people... Throughout there, everyone, and what happened? Why was the anger of the Lord greatly aroused? Because the people were complaining. So the Lord not only hears, the Lord is displeased. Not only is the Lord displeased, the Lord is angered. God is angered when we complain. Because complaining is a counterfeit. Because complaining is not who you are. Tell your neighbor you are not created to complain. Come on, tell them it's not your nature. It's not your nature. Have you ever found the kabaka susuling on the road? Why? It's impossible. Because it's not in his our nature as the beloved of God, as the redeemed of the Lord, as the anointed of the Lord, as the set apart of the Lord, as the co-heirs with Christ, as the heirs of God, as the redeemed of the Lord, as those that have been sealed of the Lord, is to give praise and to be content, not to complain. Whenever we complain, God is displeased. So I want you today to start counting your blessings. The scripture says, it is impossible to please God without faith, right? And the first point we say, there is no way you can have faith unless you speak a language of praise and honor. Whenever there is complaining, faith goes away. And when there is no faith, you will never see the peace of God. And when there is no peace of God, you will fall sick. And when you fall sick, it depletes displeases God because God wants you to live a healthy life. That's what John tells us. I want you to live a prosperous and healthy life. That's what John says. But you can't have it if you're always complaining that the children of Israel, they complained about everything. As a church, I want to highly encourage you. If you call encounter your house, we need to change our language. And that language of complaining can never change until our heart changes. Because the scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The things that you're speaking are as a result of what is in your heart. Whatever challenges you're going through as an individual, as a family, instead of complaining about them, 
from today onwards, I want you to change. So what is the solution? The solution is found in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 should be verse 14. Has an incredible encouragement that shocked me when I read this. And I've read Philippians for many years. But this scripture shocked me. At a count of three, Philippians 2.14. If you have your Bibles, open there. Philippians 2.14. Philippians 2.14. This is the scripture that Paul writes. And the context of it is absolutely amazing. At a count of three, let's read. One, two, three, go. How many things? How many things? I can't hear you. How many things? All means what? All. Now let's go. One, two, three, go. Do how many things? Without what? Without complaining. So it means that if you're doing something and you're complaining, you're going against the nature to which God created you to do. Now some of you may say, is this even possible? Because the key word here is how many things? This is almost impossible. The only reason God can tell you to do something, it is because it is in your nature to do it. So he's saying everything you do, do it without complaining. Now either God is a liar or we are. Everything in your life, from the time you are born to the time you die when you're 90, everything you do, do it without. Oh, Pastor, you can't believe this. I'm the only one who sustains the family. Do it without what? Oh, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. This sickness has what? Well. Do it without what? Oh, Pastor. I've stayed without a job. Do it without what? The Bible says do all things without complaining. Hallelujah. I want you to memorize this verse. Do how many things? Without what? Now let me tell you this text. Paul writes this text when he's in prison. He is in prison and he's writing to people who are set free. He's writing to people, to the church in Philippi that is enjoying life. The church in Philippi was a great church. They were like us. Now Paul is in chains because of the gospel. But he's the one encouraging them. In fact, it's the same text he says, rejoice and always what? Rejoice. So how can he, it's, it's the same Bible, Philippians, where he says that be anxious for what? While he's where? He's saying all the things when he's in prison. He's in prison but he's saying be anxious for nothing. He's in prison and saying rejoice always. He's in prison saying do all things without what? Complaining. He would be the first person to complain. Oh God, he was flogged more than 40 minus 2 slashes. He was beaten when he, was, when, when he entered uh, Philippi. He was, he was flogged. He was, he was thrown in the dungeon. They did a lot of things about him. But he said, all things I'm doing, I'm doing them without what? Why have we fallen for the trap of always complaining about things? And we miss the glory of God. And we miss the favor of God. And we miss the hand of God. Why? Because everything these days we do, we complain. My salary is not enough. Who told you your salary is the what watches over you? Who told you? If your marriage is struggling, you know what you do? The remedy is very simple. You take it to the Lord in. I can tell you, you can never change your spouse. I've been married this year 13 years. I can never change Angel. I have tried, I failed. <laughs> it can never happen. But do you know who can? The one who created her. Amen. That boss you're complaining about, there's nothing you can ever do to change that boss. But do you know what can change that boss? 
<laughs> the Lord. You take the Lord. Take that boss to prayer. You will see what will happen. Instead of complaining, the scripture says, do not. What shall we do? We give thanks in all things. It should be First Thessalonians, if we can get it, chapter 5. Let's open. First Thessalonians, should be. Let's go there. Because now what's the solution? If Paul says we don't complain, some of you are going to say, Kati Pastor Tukolechi. I know my congregation. <laughs> so what do we do? Should be First Thessalonians. Uh, should be 5. Because I've read it a lot. 5, chapter 16. And uh, let me take it to up to 18. Very good solutions. So what do we do? Instead of complaining, what do we do? Let's go there. Jody? Very good. I want to conclude through this. This is what the scripture says. Rejoice. I can't hear you. Rejoice. Shout it loud. Rejoice. How many times? Always. So instead of complaining, what do you do? And rejoicing. I don't know how it's called in Luganda, but Kusanyuka, right? Be happy, not even happy, because rejoice is more than happy. Happy is circumstance, circumstantial. Rejoice is a choice you make in your heart, in your heart. You choose to rejoice. Whether things are going well or not, the scripture says rejoice. How many times? Glory. Number two, we are, this is the remedy of not complaining. Number one, he says rejoice always. Number two, verse 17 says, pray without what? Seizing. He says, pray without ceasing. Every time you are about to complain about your neighbor, what do you do? Musabiri. Because the scripture says, pray without ceasing. Pastor, is it, this, is it even possible? But that's what the scripture says. So number one is rejoice always. Verse 16. Some of you are thinking, where am I getting it? First Thessalonians 5, 16. Rejoice always. Number two, pray without. Number three, uh -huh. in what? How many things? What do you do? For this is what? Oh, pastor, I don't know the will of God for my life. The Bible says it's here. To what? Give thanks. Hallelujah. So my friends, as I conclude, the only way we can break camp from this complaining, I never want to be in an environment where I displease God. I want to be in an environment that honors and glorifies God. And complaining doesn't do it. Instead of complaining, the scripture says, rejoice always. Pray without what? Ceasing. In everything we give what? Thank. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Instead of complaining, what do we do? Rejoice always. Pray without Give thanks in everything, give. Let's repeat that again. Instead of complaining, what do we do? We rejoice. Pray without. In everything we give. For that's the will of God in Christ. I can tell you when we do that. The Lord will be. Come on, let's give him praise. Today I want you to go and watch your mouth. Every time you want to complain, rejoice. Pray. Give what? Thanks. When you do those three things, You'll break camp from where you are. So would we bow our heads? 
Heavenly Father, we've heard your word from Numbers 11. Would you take a moment and just repent? Just, just, just repent. And repentance is just not uttering. So Lord, I am sorry for, for complaining. Come on, tell him I'm sorry for complaining about my health, complaining about... Come on, tell him the things you've complained about. Just tell him, Lord, forgive me. Complaining about my relationships, complaining about my home, complaining about my job. Just go ahead and just say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because I know it, now I know it displeases you. Come on, tell him. I know. I know it displeases you. So today I repent. Father, as a congregation this morning, we repent for complaining. For our lives being full of complaint and no thanksgiving and no prayer. Father, I pray that today you'll give us a heart of gratitude. A heart that is positioned to giving thanks. A heart that is positioned to saying, Lord, thank you. Lord, I pray for couples. Couples that are about to divorce. Couples that are about to throw in the towel because of complaining. I pray that today will be a new day for them. Lord, I pray for individuals in this place whose home has no peace because of complaining. Always looking for fault. Lord, I come against that critique spirit. That spirit of complaining in the name of Jesus. So right now, I pray for joy to come in your house. I pray for peace to come back to your house. In the name of Jesus.